Hello and welcome to Active and Healthy with Gina. It's lovely to have you with us today. I hope that you're at home and you are ready, seated in that comfortable, sensible chair uh, to do your first 10 minutes of Ageless Grace. And I am delighted to have some very special friends with me today who have come to do the exercises in the studio. So on this side, I've got Zandra and I have got Patsy and I have got Carol and we've got Rashid from the office again because we thought we'd balance it with four people. As we say, ageless grace is for anybody, whatever age. So thank you all for coming and sharing and being with us. They are part of my Saturday class. They've been coming to the ageless grace classes for almost two years. As you can see, they all look really fit, really healthy, which they are. Uh, my husband, Nick, Nick, names them the ageless rockers. So um, I'm very thrilled that they're going to be here today for us to be able to do the class. So the three exercises that we are going to do today, although we've got four bits of music. The first exercise is called Yo Baby. It's all of our stretches. So we're going to be just taking a stretch and holding it. So as always with Ageless Grace, the, the rule is voice of the body is always wise. So if this is the first time you're watching the show and you're taking part in these classes, find a solid chair. It can be without arms or with arms. Um, be barefoot and let's get ready to go. Second exercise we're going to do is get down and get up. So there's going to be a little bit of stretching down to the floor and up. And the third one is called dance party. And that's about emotional expression. It's about moving your top. It's about moving your legs. And you'll see these girls all love and have great dancing feet. So let's get going. Let's start with these stretches. And uh, with our Yo Baby exercises, we're going to do 10 minutes of Ageless Grace. Okay, let's start with our hands up. So we're taking a nice big wide stretch and we're just going to hold it up and stretch those arms, maybe hold it back a little bit more. And then we're going to bring the hands together overhead. We're going to clasp the hands, interlace the fingers, turn them inside out and then we're looking up. Look up to your hands, look up to the ceiling and just hold for a few minutes or a few seconds. That's lovely. And then slowly bring your arms down, holding that stretch. How are we doing? That's great. Just hold it. Shoulder height. Nice. Feel that stretch out of your shoulders. If for any reason the shoulder's uncomfortable, then just relax it. You don't have to do this bit. Let's take the hands behind us. We're stretching and holding these arms up as high as they can go. Whatever's comfortable for you. We all have different ranges, different levels of mobility. That's great, lower the arms down slowly. We're putting one hand on the waist. We're gonna put the other hand up overhead and we're just stretching to the side and we're holding that stretch. So these are all nice, slow stretches. Just loosen up the muscles. And let's go to the other side, change hands now. Put the other hand on the waist, other hand up. Go to the side, hold that stretch. Beautiful, so down we come. Let's just roll these shoulders. So roll the shoulders back behind you. Lovely, and we're gonna work on now just stretching out the hip a little. So we're gonna lift one leg wherever's comfortable. If you can hold under the leg or on the knee, and just rotate that ankle. That's lovely, Carol. Great. Nice, Sandra. Doesn't matter which leg you're doing at home. Start with one. We're working to the other. Now, if you're feeling mobile enough, stretch and put the cross the leg. So you're resting that ankle on the opposite knee. We just hold that stretch. Oh, we're going to run out of music. So quickly, we've got to go to the other side. Always got to balance the body. So roll the ankle. So we're going to put that leg up and just hold that stretch. So we've just started getting the body loosened up. Okay, all right, next one is our get up and get down. So tap your legs, stretch these hands up. And we're tapping these knees again and reaching down a little ways, not going too far. I want you to keep this back nice and loose. We're tapping our knees, reaching forward. Just a little ways to begin with. Up, knees, forward. So we'll just do down halfway. 
Now the next time we're going to go all the way down to the floor if you can. So knees and floor and knees and up. So we're not doing it too fast. So we're just going up and down, hands up, knees down to the floor. So just find your own rhythm and pattern. Lovely. So we just stretch out this back and whole body. We're going over the heart line, which is making this heart go a bit faster. And we're going to switch now to doing it with one hand. So one arm. So tap leg. Up. Tap. And just down a little to begin with. We're not going all the way down to the floor. We're just going to do three. Reaching a little way. So you're not going to get too far out of your own range. And then now we're going to go down to the floor. Floor. Knee. Up. Let's pick up the pace a little. Up. And up. How's everyone doing? All good? Are they all still breathing? It's gone quiet back there. They're normally much noisier than this in class. Last one on this side. And we're doing the other hand. So tap, up. Tap and just a little way down, not the whole way to begin with. Just make sure this side's nice and loose as well. Okay, now all the way down to the floor. Come on, let's go. Up and down. How are we doing at home? It's nice and easy. Just getting this back going. Lovely. Now we're just going to clap and tap the hands. So tap the knees twice. One, two, clap. And we're going to go overhead. And reach as if to the floor, but not the whole way down. Up to one, two, one. And down a little ways. And we're going all the way to the floor. One, two, tap, two, up, two. And let's do some singles. So singles, knees, floor, knees, up. Oh yeah, these guys are good. How are we doing at home? Finding your pace to do it. So good. Get that heart going. Brilliant. Well done, everybody. Okay, so these last ones, we've just got two dancing ones. We're going to start with these upper arms and the shoulders. Let's shake. We're doing a little dive in the chair. Bounce these legs as well. Lift one leg up. Woo! And let's take both legs out and in. So get these hips nice and loose. Hands out as well. Arms in and out. How's Rashid doing? Those feet bouncing over there? Yay! <laughs> I like it. Back to a little march and let's get the shoulders shaken. Shake the shoulders forward. This is good for the waist. Lift one leg. And go, legs in and out. In and out quicker. Just shows we can do exercise, moving in our chairs. How about crossing these legs and arms? Are we going quite fast here? <laughs> I'm sorry, these little chairs are slippy. You have to find a chair at home that you're not going to slip in. Bounce these legs. Slow. So that's one of our dance ones. We have to make sure we get lots of dancing in. So we're going to keep this heart rate going, keep these legs going a little bit further. Let's get going with kicking these knees in and out. So it's a bounce and a kick. Kick. Sandra's legs bounce so quickly, so do Patsy's and Carol's. All these girls are fast. I can't keep up with them. And we're going to do one heel to the side. And in. And the other side. Point it with the finger as well. The more of the body parts we're using, the more the heart's going to have to work a little bit harder. It's only 10 minutes. We can all do 10 minutes. Girls and the beautiful.
beauty of this song, or these um, dance party tracks, are that it's about your emotional expression. You dance the way you want to. And kick it toe forward. Quicker. Oh yeah. How's our heart rate going, Rashid? You still with us? Oh good. Just checking. Patsy? Yeah. Sandra all right? Yeah, Bob. Okay. Both knees. Heels. Out. Back. Shh. These bodies moving. We're almost there. Not much longer. Let's finish with some crossing. Arms and legs. Good for your coordination. Good for your balance. And quicker. All oh, those legs are going so fast, aren't we? I can't even see them. Woo! There we are. 10 minutes of ageless grace with Gina and today. Thank you. Patsy, Sandra, Carol and Rashid, and we hope that you had fun at home as well. So grab a glass of water, we're going to go to break, and then on to our next section. Thanks a lot. Welcome back to Active and Healthy with Gina. I hope you enjoyed your exercises. I hope you've had a quick breather, grab some water, important to stay hydrated and ready for today's subject, which is gonna be decluttering. Now, this is a subject that is gonna be relevant for anybody of any age, because the reality is, even with the best intentions, we can end up hoarding, keeping too much stuff. And the reality is that as we get older, that stuff has just accumulated and it is fair for you and for your families that you get to clear up some of that clutter. Because I know that when my sweet mum passed away and she lived in a three bedroom house, a woman on her own, and unbelievable, every single cupboard was stuffed full of stuff. There is this universal law that you will fill. The cupboards and the space that you have, you will fill. And then very often there's the overflow. Boxes that go into garage, up into the loft, and you end up with all this stuff accumulated that you don't open for years on end. So it took us, my sisters and I, it took 10 weeks. We were lucky that we, we had the time. We took the time to really be able to go through her things um, slowly because there were so many precious memories with so many different, whether it was a piece of clothes, even some old jumpers of my dad who had died five years, um, seven years rather, previously, was still around. So there were things that we wanted to go through and luckily we had a really good relationship. So it was very much a process of sharing, uh, of, of sorting the things that if one sister wanted something, the next time there were things that all of us wanted, it was like, okay, now it was my time to choose that I would like that. So it was really, really shared. It was not one person grabbing grabbing things, which does sometimes happen. So it's not that this is going to be a morbid subject, because this subject of decluttering, I don't mind whether you're 25, 45, uh, 65, 85. The truth is that we all have lots of things, and if something did happen to us tomorrow, somebody is going to be responsible for clearing those things out. So it is so much nicer that you have actually had things allocated to the people you love, that if you know you have a child, a son or a daughter, who loves a particular picture. Well, then it has been specified. It's written down. Everyone is in agreement that this object is going to go to this loved person. It was really nice in my husband's family that my mother-in-law sat down with the children and so she was in her mid-80s and said, great, let's get clear what everybody wants and so that you all choose your favorite pieces. So they all chose their favorite pieces. And yes, one or two of them might have wanted the same piece, but again, they alternated and they took turns. And what it meant is that everybody then had the favorite piece that they wanted to hang on to that was going to be a special memory for them going forward to the future. So I really suggest that you do that. And um, she also took the time to choose presents for all the grandchildren. Children. And this is going to be re very relevant uh, when it comes to the subject of decluttering because the reality is these days that a lot of the objects that our grandparents and our parents collected and had and maybe even inherited from their parents are objects these days that maybe your children don't want. So 
she very sweetly chose a little tea set, silver tea set, for my daughter. Um, I don't know if she's used it yet, I need to check. And um, some silver uh, fish knife and fork for my son, who only eats fish. But again, I think they're going to be precious memories for the children. I don't know how much they're going to get used. So it's nice to sort and give things to your loved ones that are things that you think they're going to use. So you want to declutter your space. You want to be able to save the things that are really important. Probably for me, the things that we really, really treasured most were the photos. So there were amazing photos. So we were able to go through photo memories of our parents, with obviously us as children, which were absolutely hysterically classical, and then with our, our children, so with the grandparents. So we shared pictures of, of each other's families, and obviously took pictures, many of which we might have had copies ourselves. But those kind of memories, the photos are absolutely irreplaceable. It's the one thing when people are asked, what are you going to grab if there's a fire in the house? It's probably going to be your photos and your passport or your ID, those things that are difficult to replace. In my mum's case, what we also found were all of her diaries, going back to 1955, to the year that she got married. And it was wonderful to be able to go through that as a record and to look at the dates that, from when my sister was born in 56, and outings that then started happening when um, I was born in 57. My full name is Virginia. So for the first kind of six, nine months in the diary, it was take Virginia here, take Virginia there. And somewhere along the line, Virginia got dropped down to Gina, for which I'm grateful. Virginia is a pretty name, but it's a bit of a mouthful. So it, it's wonderful to look back on a record like that of the events of when they went there and when they did things and when they did things with you. Absolutely classic. And old passports too are wonderful, A, to look at old photographs of, of loved ones and even to see their travels and where they went. Mind you, passports don't get stamped the way they used to these days to really be an accurate reflection of where one goes. Something that one needs to consider because people are, um, a lot of people journal these days. So they write. I've kept journals for a good, probably now 10 years. And you need to decide that if these journals are private and if you've written anything that you would not want your children to read or you wouldn't want published, then you actually need to put a little sticker on it just to say to be destroyed. So give some thought to this. You don't want to be embarrassing your children when they get to pick up your journals. Um, and so destroy, ask to have destroyed those things that really are strictly personal and private to you. One of the things that I have kept and my mother kept for me and I'm glad that she did are old school reports. Now those really are funny when you go back and read your own school reports of what you did age 8, age 10, age 12. So I've kept my children's as well. So I hope that they will be equally amused by the things that they got up to their school reports. All I know is that they've exceeded every report that was ever written about them. And I think I have two on mine. But it's great historically to be able to go back and look at those different things. So, if you are going to start decluttering and your parents are still alive, then what I would suggest, and if I'm in a situation like this, I have got three children technically who've left home, and to ask the question is, have they left stuff at the house? Well, when we moved house four years ago was the time I got the children to look at their things and say, okay, what do you want kept? What can we give away? So it's a wonderful time to sort and declutter. And that's what I did. We were moving from a big five bedroom house down to a three bedroom house, much smaller garden, plot, garage. And it was the most wonderful cathartic process to be able to sort through all those cupboards that I had stuffed full of things. A garage that we actually, I will confess, hadn't parked a car in probably for five years because it had so many boxes of bits in. So I don't know if you're the same and if you've got areas of the house that are overrun with things, then as I said, it doesn't matter what your age, it's a great time to make a project to start clearing it out. So it was an opportunity for me, the easy stuff was what you could throw away. If you can get your children around to look at their areas to say, great, what do you want kept? And it's not that they're now going to be stored in um, my own new garage it was like well fabulous I'm not storing anything if you want anything kept it's going to be shipped to where you now live because these are your things if you want to keep them um, I had one son who was moving and and uh, studying a lot so I have to confess I got a few boxes of his bits up in the loft 
but it makes them choose. So if you think you've got things at your parents' house, be kind to yourself and to them. Get in there and sort them out because it's a perfect opportunity to be able to do that. My daughter had a um, stuffed toy, Peter Rabbit, which she hung on to for years and years. I wouldn't let her throw it out. I have kept it. One day I hope I'll have grandchildren and I'm sure it will become a favored favorite toy in their collection. So if you've got your favorite toys and you want to hang on to a few, then do that. I will admit we have hung on to four boxes of Lego. All my children were very keen with putting those little bits of Lego together. And in fact, when we packed up the house, uh, my elder son and his girlfriend had a play date. They got all the Lego out, spread it out on the floor, these four boxes, and spent the whole day creating uh, spaceships and houses and one thing and another. And at the end of the day, there were all these little things scattered around the room. They had great fun. At the end of it, broke them all up, put them away with the strict instructions that the Lego boxes are to be kept for the next generation. So. Keep those boxes clear, have them well marked. So if for any reason you are packing up a house, you're not having to open up a box. Write clearly on the outside. Maybe even put a piece of paper on the inside to specify exactly what is in there. It's also important to remember that these things take time. Have patience, don't try and tackle every single room at once. I work from home, so I had my own home office and it was getting very chaotic. There was far too much paperwork around and I felt I was kind of drowning in it. So I found a great book that I would really recommend and there are many good books about getting your stuff organized. And the book was called Organizing from the Inside Out. It's by a lady called Julie Morgenstern. And she has a wonderful process and she uses the acronym SPACE. So if you've got pen and paper, I jot this down because it's a great way to start. Even if you're going to start with um, a drawer in a hall or one of your kitchen drawers that gets lots of different things put into it. So the, the idea is that you work only on one area at a time. So you don't find a book and then go to the bookshelf, put it in the bookshelf, and while you're on the bookshelf suddenly you find a piece of paper that now needs to belong in the filing cabinet. So you want to go over here, put it into the filing cabinet. Oh, and while you're in the filing cabinet, you find something that belongs in this drawer. Because then you're just crisscrossing and you've got to drive yourself insane and nothing will ever get done. Number one golden rule, start in one room, one area, and work on that. So her acronym SPACE start, stands for, the S is for SORT. So when I got into my office, I just sorted through all the different piles of paper and I put them into the different relevant subjects, whether it was to do with my finances, with my business, with the children, with family. So they were all in files. So you just sort everything. Then you purge it. The P is for purge. So now you start going through the piles and there are things that you can definitely throw out. If they are old catalogs, old pieces of information that go back years, the one thing modern technology has done is that you have access to updated information the whole time. You do not need to keep catalogs, magazines going back. One one, two, three, ten, however many years it is. So get rid of those. P is for purge. The A is for assign. So now get clear that if you've cleared out all this paper that you've got a filing cabinet. You've got somewhere nice to be able to put the things that you are hanging on to. C is now to containerize it. So you're actually going to put it into the files, into the folders, into the boxes, label it, have everything clearly, clearly marked. And then the last thing, the E is for equalize, is that you take the time, either 10 minutes of day, at the end of a day, or 15 minutes at the end of a week to be able to stay on top of it. And it's amazing the transformation that can happen in any area in your home if you do that. So this is a great opportunity for you to declutter your home and your space and to know that you can take responsibility for the things that you want to be able to give your children, to get rid of the things that you don't want, to give away things because there are other people, particularly we live here in South Africa, in a country where people are only too happy to take things that can be donated. So have fun sorting your space. Thank you for spending today's show with me. I look forward to seeing you on next week doing our 10 minutes of Ageless Grace. Don't forget you can go and take a look at the websites agelessgrace.com and my own web website Ageless Grace for Gina. If you want to order those products, those little cards so you can keep track of the exercises that we're doing, then you can do that as well. I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.